So, hello everybody. I'm really pleased to be here in Vancouver to present to you a tool uh, which we developed to analyze informal workplace learning. Uh, we are trying to see the tool more as a method and uh, how we work. But before I will elaborate on the tool, uh, I would like to frame a little bit this presentation so that you know what we are doing and especially why we do what we are doing. So um, I work at the Open University of the Netherlands and I work at a kind of special department, really fun to work at. Uh, and we are completely funded by the Dutch government and they installed um, our department because they wanted to support uh, the professional development of teachers. So we need to do research on the professional development of teachers, but at the same time support the teachers in doing it. And our special focus is how that teachers learn uh, informally in the workplace. So um, we investigate informal workplace learning and we see informal learning as um, yeah, dealing with tested knowledge. It's really complex. Uh, it's mostly hidden. It's invisible. Sometimes even the teachers are not aware that they're learning while they're learning informally. Uh, it's mostly aimed at solving work-related uh, problems. We believe that's a really important driver for professional development. Even in the research, research area of professional development, they see that the really formal uh, professional development activities are not really effective for the teachers because they're not related to their practice. They're not solving their real problems. So the focus of the government is now really changing to the lifelong learning and the informal learning and how we can so support that in the, uh, for the teachers. Um, now, it's maybe strange that I'm here at the Learning Analytics Conference because our research is not online. Uh, we need to help the teachers and in the Netherlands, teachers are just not online yet that often. They do email, of course, but their real interactions with their teachers just happen in the teacher room. You know, there's where they discuss their students and, and, and how they work. So, but I am here because we uh, based our method and our tool on what's happening in the real world, in the real workplace, and we're really interested now on how we can, can translate this to the learning analytics field and how we can uh, use this tool maybe in the online environment as a plugin. Um, and we're here to explore um, this field. And maybe this can give you some inspiration um, for the learning analytics fields as well. Uh, then uh, another important item is that we really do practice-based research. So we really work in the real setting with the teachers. So the tool that we create is also uh, for the teachers themselves that they can really use it and reflect on it. So the visualizations need to be simple, understandable and easy to use. So it's not as complex as we uh, saw of then because that's way too much for the teachers. So we really want it to be also a reflected tool. And we actually also created together with the teachers. So every step that we took, we, uh, we talked to the teachers, okay, is this uh, clear for you? What do you see in the, present, uh, in the representation and so on. So um, we are dealing here with informal learning, which is tested, which is, which is invisible. And we thought that the first good step for the teachers is to make the informal learning or try to make it uh, visible for them. And um, to do that, um, yeah, we tried to create some kind of social learning browser for the teachers. Uh, because we do practice-based research, research, it's really a user-generated tool, so we base ourselves on Web 2.0 uh, technologies. Uh, we wanted to use it for the teachers, so to raise awareness about their informal learning. Uh, we gather real-time data. We also want the teachers to keep on updating the information so that we can have a dynamic representation of the networks that we're showing. Um, for us, of course, we want to contribute to the understanding of what is formal learning, how is it happening in the workplace, and so forth. Like I said, uh, we need to provide instant and understandable feedback immediately to the teachers. Uh, it's interactive, it's dynamic, and um, we want to also gain 
information on different levels because learning and especially informal learning is so complex so we try to uh, visualize different dimensions of learning on different levels or perspectives. Uh, before we start building the tool, of course, we went into the literature and uh, tried to find theoretical frameworks on which we can, could base ourselves on. Uh, we see the informal learning in the perspective of network learning. Uh, like Dan presented, you have different perspectives on learning and we really look at the participatory uh, perspective of learning. So we see learning that people use uh, their network uh, to learn from in the workplace. Uh, then we looked at social network theory because we want to make it visualized and social uh, network analysis is a really good way to do that. But of course people don't just interact, they also need resources, uh, they, they learn about something. So we also looked at the theory of social capital, so how they deal with resources and the flow of information, how you can re represent that. And of course in the workplace, uh, also, the community of practice factor is really important. What are the values of the teachers? Is there an open atmosphere? How do they, how do they perceive informal learning? So these are ways that we uh, try to gather in the tool or the different perspectives that we try to grasp. Um, what kind of data do we collect? And maybe interesting for you is how we collect it. Now, um, we, I really do face-to-face -face interviews with the teachers. And we ask them, okay, uh, what is the problem or what problems do you encounter in the classroom? What are topics that you want to work on uh, or learn from with your teachers? Uh, so we get a really uh, big data set of all kind of learning topics that are evolving in, in the school, things that are now uh, things of interest for the teachers. Then we ask to draw their eagle networks around those topics. Uh, we ask them to define the quality of the topic, the quality of the interactions of the people that they have and so forth. And uh, we created then the tool in which they can insert the data. I'm not going to show you that facet because for the learning analytics that's maybe not that interested, but we, I will show you now uh, the visualizations of the data that we gather and also the instant feedback that we give uh, to the teachers. So it's a web-based tool. Um, I'm really, really not a technical person. So we had the, the big opportunity to talk to Chris Teplovs uh, to do the real visualization. And it's really fun to work with him because he's also a real researcher. So it, re reality is a really complex phenomenon. Uh, and he did his best job to try to visualize what we wanted the teachers to see. And I think he did, he did a, a really great job. So what you see now is this is the tool and those are the teams that the teachers in the schools that we are investigating are working on. I'm sorry, it's in Dutch, but it's like corporate, corporative learning, differentiation, uh, classroom management, you know, the really uh, topics that are now really relevant in education. And you see that's a kind of a tech cloud. So the more people involved are saying that I'm involved in this topic, the bigger the words get. Uh, it's really nice for school managers to see that so they know what the, what the teachers are dealing with, what are their problems, what are they working on. They find it really valuable to see it. Uh, then you can browse through the different uh, topics and you can see uh, the network of um, the people that are dealing with this um, topic. Now in this specific project, it's like a school cluster is our, uh, the people that we work with and there are different primary education schools and they want the teachers to work more together uh, above the schools. So the colors are like the school organizations. So you can see clearly, okay, um, people from this school are also interacting with people from that school or it's really clustered, the information exchange is really clustered only in one school and not um, above the different schools, so how can we create interventions to get more knowledge, knowledge exchange between schools, between teachers. Um, and teachers can, can um, scroll around it. So the different perspectives are then on the organizational level, so you see all the content and the topics they're dealing with. 
then um, you can also click, for example, on a person, and then that person can see his own ego perspective in that domain, and also his overall uh, ego perspective. And here you see, for example, this person has disconnections and he is dealing with all these topics. And then you can click again, for example, on a topic, and then you see all the people not so connected. You know, teachers are not so really connecting and knowledge uh, sharing, especially not in primary education because they're just in the classroom and then go home uh, again. And uh, based on these findings, we try to find interventions with the schools on how they can stimulate the um, knowledge exchange and also we present the visualizations to the teachers and say okay uh, you're dealing with this problem okay but you're only talking with this and this and this person what can we do to um, yeah to to make your informal learning more broader uh, so you can also scroll per school for example this school is not dealing with that topic. So you also see that uh, if you click on a school, the topic list changes. So you see what schools are dealing with what teams. Okay, so if I click all, click on the biggest one, cooperative learning, and you see all the people involved. In it. You can also move around the tags. Okay, so that's how we try uh, to, yeah, to move between different levels so people see their own learning, they see the learning in their own organization concerning a certain team and they see all the teams that, are, that their colleagues are learning on. Uh, that we will do a better demonstration and a longer one uh, during the receptions. So you're all welcome to discuss with us uh, the tool and how we can implement it maybe more in the online environment. Okay, so you saw there are three main perspectives in the tool, the team, uh, the theme, sorry, the network and the ego uh, perspective. Now, how do we want to translate it to uh, the learning analytics? Well, um, uh, yeah, we want to, we, we are wondering, okay, we, we collect all these kinds of data. Now, how can we automate it in an online environment? For example, we also collect profile data from the teachers. What are your expertise? What are you working on? So that we can also do like other analysis. So is the most expert person in the middle of the network or not? Uh, we, can all, we can do all sorts of network data with the experts of, of the tool. Uh, on the individual level, the tie level, the network level, and maybe also on the community level. For example, we saw in the school that the managers are using really completely different words than their teachers talking about the same topic and there was really a distant, distant between the managers and the teachers. So you see that uh, there wasn't really a community between uh, management and the teaching and now they're trying to work on their, um, yeah, to, to become closer together. Okay, so to conclude, it's really a research tool now in development. Uh, it's a social learning browser so that teacher can browse in their personal learning and the learning of their colleagues. We try to give instant feedback. Uh, and we see learning as a form of value creation because the next step is that we go to the teacher and say, okay, this is your network, this is, this is the learning, but what is the value you get out of it so that we can use it also for the teachers in their, um, in their talks or in their career opportunities, uh, in their functional talks with our principals. Okay, I do all this for my professional development informally in the classroom. These are my networks and these are the outputs of my informal learning. Um, so people can detect multiple networks in their organization. People can connect IDs. They can, can find other people who are dealing with the same problems. And we define our interventions in the schools um, yeah, to discuss how we can stimulate informal learning in the workplace. 
or future plans is I'm actually starting up an internship at the UKOU with Simon, how we can implement the tool in their social learn environment so that we can start up the learning analytics connection uh, between our real-time learning and the online learning. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, any questions from the audience? Okay, I have um, two questions, but they're short. The first one was, do you have any examples of um, teacher or school use of the feedback? You emphasize it's important to give them the feedback. So something more detailed than I see there's not a lot of interaction around this or I see that you're not involved in interaction, but something where your analysis actually suggested a specific kind of intervention. So that was my first question. My second question was um, how you deal with the social sensitivity of some of this information. Do teachers feel comfortable uh, providing you with information about who they interact with and maybe more sensitive who they don't interact with um, around some of these topics and uh, feeling the uh, tension between uh, giving people privacy and having the information be useful which kind of suggests that it has to be public that school leaders and uh, higher level jurisdictions in the education system that are trying to encourage informal learning in the workplace need to see it and yet how do you guard people's privacy um, okay first of all all teachers have a personal login uh, file so um, they create their own personal ego networks and before we start we explain them that uh, it's really a reflection tool and not an evaluation tool so that it's only for their own reflection and uh, until now, teachers don't have problems with it. They just cooperate um, with the research. I even went in a school two weeks ago and there was a really big reorganization. So a lot of teachers were going to lose their jobs. And even then, they didn't mind filling in the tool um, because we have a really good agreement also with the managers. What are you going to do with the tool? Um, people can always change information, update information, delete information if they don't want to cooperate anymore. So they're really free to use it. Um, we, we only use it like in the school and in the classroom. So yeah, we have agreements on it and we just do what, uh, what the people want to do with it. Uh, until now we don't have really ethical problems in the school they're really happy to see how they're learning and also some people who are like in the corner of the network maybe you can think like oh I'm not a social person but they say like oh I just learn on myself and I'm a really personal learner so they just reflect on on their activities it's not that they really have a problem with it but um, Funny is that when we were trying to, how are we going to visualize it? I worked with teachers and we also worked with like different shapes and things like that. And then they said, oh, I really don't want to be a triangle or a square because they felt that was really a negative uh, feeling. So we, yeah, we really talk with the teachers and we didn't encounter a problem yet, but we could do. Then practical examples uh, of the feedback actually, um, we're just using the tool in, in three projects and sometimes we do the, the feedback personally and sometimes we do it in group depending on um, the purpose of the project. And uh, it's not only, uh, it's, it's about the topics. They're really interested, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm learning about top topic and other teachers are, are also involved in the topic and how, and we put interventions, how they can collaborate more together. Then, uh, for example, there was a school and there were teachers in classical 
uh, subject and they were like, oh, in our school, um, they don't have enough attention to our task and we're a gymnasium and we want to go to a higher level, but the classical languages, nobody is uh, yeah, involving in that. And then when they saw their uh, learning networks around that topic, they saw that they're really interacting in group and not going out. So they said, oh, if we want to do that, then we have to go more out. Uh, so yeah, there are a lot of, we don't really provide feedback, like you see this and this and this. We only show the images and, and ask them what they see. Okay, thanks a lot.